and then also the state of the SEC quarterback. A lot of quarterback talk, a lot of great plays by a lot of great quarterbacks here in this conference right now, Cole. We're going to talk a lot of quarterbacks today. We had some great quarterback play in one specific game that I don't even know if I can give you a word or a sentence to describe LSU South Carolina. This thing was off the charts. If you want to talk entertaining football, Roman, this game had it all. Every single ounce of it. It, it had comebacks. It had fast starts. It had drama. We had referee questionability. We, we had all kinds of every, everything. It was like WWE, but on a Saturday afternoon. And we told you it was going to be like WWE, a heavyweight title fight. We got that in the trenches. That South Carolina defense did not disappoint. No, they didn't. But one thing that you have not heard about is what LSU did to counter hmm. that South Carolina defense. And I want to take you inside and show you just a little bit of what was happening with the South Carolina defense and the LSU offense. So right out of the gate, and this is where I need your expertise. All right. I'm going to let you watch this play kind of first and foremost, and you right, just give me, me kind of give me your thoughts here on kind of like where guys are going, what guys are doing. And we're probably going to have to run it back a couple of times, and that's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll just kind of get it going here one time in slow motion. This is what LSU thought they were going to live on. They mm -hmm. thought they were going to be able to run inside zone, so to the left with the splitter coming. But when you really watch kind of how – South Carolina played this play. A couple things that I want you to pay attention to. All right? They're teeing off on the center, so they read the center in this game. Now you see the looper coming around, so yep. penetrator looper, so they will run stunt inside. Yep. Debo. Where's he coming, coming from? Where's he coming from? He's coming from opposite, but it's also he understands what he has behind him. That's when you start to involve mm -hmm. the, the third level player. So he has this backside. So he doesn't have to worry about the cutback. This so guy. everything goes front side. The this biggest guy. thing right you here. Are, you are smart. You know that? <laughs> because on our, our normal keys, I mean, is this is this where we're going to go? Now, obviously, we'll split zone motion is kind of taking you over there. But I mean, he's not going opposite a gap, right? Right out of the gate, he's yes. going over there. Boom, right now. Because we understand we want that thing to try and cut all the way back. Some more time on the running back. Safety's going to come down. You don't see those things. So it's what we try and hide defensive position in players. So that run stunt in the middle is going to prevent my center, my guards from climbing to the second Correct. level. Well, all of a sudden, we got a problem here. Can't do that. So what are we, what are we going to get to? How, how are we going to operate now? So got to kind of come up with some different things. This LSU offense did. Now, this is something you got to pay kind of a little bit close attention to. If it was on the flip side, you get a better idea of sort of where the helmet is. I wanted you to see the play first. Watch Emory Jones pull. Watch his hat. Left, right, left, right. Look, he doesn't know. Okay? So the movement, pressure, stunts, everything that South Carolina was throwing at this LSU offense causing some confusion. Because you can see, I mean, he, he actually prevents his player from getting out there and blocking somebody else. Yeah, right here. Boom. And then because this one, it, he doesn't know that he's – Coming in early, so now we got to, and we're late to the next one. All these things start to happen. Great job by Vakari Swain. I love of, Vakari Swain. Of South way. Carolina, and then also uh, Bang Kamara, right here. Great job, just Vakari just Swain. Fast. He has no regard for his body. I mean, he did this two weeks ago. He's doing it this way. He will come up and he will throw his body at just about any team to try to stop anything. So now we got to come up with a full solution here. So our zone scheme's not working. Our pin and pull gap scheme's not working. What are we going to do, Roman? We're going to do a little something that you have not seen just yet from our offense. This was an adjustment that was made on the sideline, folks. This is not something LSU has in their playbook. This is not something that they said, oh, hey, remember when we repped this in practice this week? So, Roman, what we're doing here is basically just kind of a man zone scheme. It looks like the play that we would call duo. We're trying to get double teams, but it's really not that. Watch how these offensive linemen are just sort of duck walking off the ball a little bit. So, Roman, what you go to, it's zone principles mentally. Right. But we're just kind of manning it up. We're waiting for you. We'll sort it out. And the main thing that they did is they let the offensive tackle, most of the time, Will Campbell, yes. lock that backside. So, if you're going to come upfield, that's fine. I'll lock you out and we'll go under. You want to come underneath? That's cool. We'll wash you down and my back is going to be able to cut back right there. Now, my only concern here is on this defensive end versus Will Campbell. The biggest thing is you're, you're – your hat being on the inside. If you are contained, your hat has to be on the outside. You have to show some kind of color on that outside of that, that offensive lineman because if not, Will Campbell's just going to do exactly. It's a reason why he's a top-rated tackle 
in this year's class. So if you, if you continue to allow him to just be one on one with a smaller defense in, that is very normal for him. Game on the line, the same play that I told you about, this sort of man zone scheme yes. that LSU went to, and the cutbacks. I wonder where he's running the ball day. at, Cole. Cutbacks were hitting all day. It's not my fault that you don't know how to line up. <laughs> it's not on I, us. I don't blame me for that. Okay? He's running the ball right there. Point being, it's the same play that we just talked about. Lock the defensive end, man. Up. We would have had the double team to him anyway. I'm not even worried about it, okay? So LSU, by the way, in this game, just quickly for you here, I got a couple numbers. Gap scheme, eight carries, 21 yards. Split zone that we saw early, four for 31. One of those were 26 yards. This man zone play, they ran it 12 times for 90 yards. They didn't run it until the middle of the second quarter. They went to that scheme, locked the backside, let everything sort of happen in front of them, figured it out, and that's why they got a little bit of a run game going late, and that helped Nussmeyer be able to complete some passes also. It was a massive adjustment for the LSU offense. I mean, you know what else helped was just a couple of little flags. I, I, I hate that for South Carolina, but you have to learn from these situations here that you cannot let, allow the referee to be involved in any big-time game situations. you got to take that out of it. There's no – we can't blame the refs. What Dana he, White always say? You don't let Never it come down it to, the to the refs. Never let them Never. have it. It's unfortunate, but great game. All right.